Hey friends, thanks for joining me again, or for the first time. In this video I'll be making a hybrid knife block from a chunk of old firewood. What's a hybrid knife block? Well, it's one that uses magnets, divots and slots to store the knives. Watch along and you'll see. Okay, excuse me while I think aloud here. So, it seems like knife blocks normally they, the knives are oriented straight down, which doesn't seem like a good efficient use of space because uh, if you pack the knives in, their natural shape would be to kind of make a curve like this. Here we have it, a big block of firewood that's very dry, it's been in the shed for ages. The back looks quite flat, which is a nice start. It's ash. It's just got some chainsaw marks, which I gave a quick hand plane just to see what it's like under all that blackness. And it looks pretty nice, it looks okay. Well, let's start by cutting this down to a more manageable size. Uh, I think roughly about there. I don't know, I'm making it up as I go along. Bit of wobbles. Bandsaw's great for cutting things like this where the back surface is not entirely flat, whereas the table saw would just give you horrible kickback. Smooth. Okay, back to planning. So what I'm aiming at is a hybrid knife lock, which is going to use magnetic force, but also keep the sort of wavy natural look of the log on the front. Now, there's a few problems here. The main one is that the force of a magnet is inversely proportional to the distance between it and the thing it's trying to stick cubed. So in other words, if you double the distance between a knife and the magnet, then the magnetic field will only be one eighth as strong. It's more complicated than that, varying with magnet shape and size and all the rest, but to get a good grip on the knives, we need to minimise the distance. This is all important, but we'll come back to that later. For now, we're going to rip down this bit of firewood. You'll see why in a second, just bear with me here. And straight away, we can see that's not going to fit. So we're going to have to take the light away. Turn that off. Got this. Pretty useful how that just slides out. So without taking the guides themselves off, we just needed to cut a bit off the bottom before we could fit that through for the rip cut. This isn't really the perfect blade for a straight deep rip cut like this one, but I'm going to have to use curvy powers later on, so it should be good for that. And it's doing quite a good job. Incidentally, if you want to cut like a bandsaw god, then you should definitely check out my bandsaw hacking video where I talk about all the mods I've done. That line's really quite disguised. So. With that split down the middle we can see a bit easier how the knives might go here. Similar arrangement to before and maybe with three down the back. We can just roughly sketch out the sort of shape we want, but before we get to that, let's just address this notch-tastic edge. It's going to need a regrind, and that might change the shape of it. It also gives me a chance to show off my amazing belt grinder. It's just a normal belt sander upturned and clamped to the bench. The woman I got this off actually gave it to me with a air compressor I was buying. She said it didn't work, but then when I got it home, uh, took it all apart, put it back together, and it seemed to be just fine. Anyway, I'm using a really low grit here to remove material quickly without overheating it. So it doesn't actually take too long to remove those notches, and then we can move on to higher grits. That blue one was a 60. This is now a 150. This is on my old belt sander that I've had for decades. The speed controller broke at one point the switch and so I replaced it with a simple pulse width modulation circuit I made. It's certainly not as compact as the old one but it's proving to be a lot more durable. 
It's just contained in a old polycarbonate half pint glass. If you're interested in that, you can check it out. There's build instructions and the schematic and stuff on the Flowering Elbow website. It's a simple circuit you can use on pretty much any universal motor. It's good for old washing machines. Pretty much there with this. Uh, I have a bit of paper handy just to test it as I'm going along. A very small amount more. This is really just sort of polishing the edge at this finer grit and then I finish it off very quickly with a leather wheel and some polishing compound. Uh, it's not amazingly perfect but good enough to take hairs off the arms, good enough for me. So during that little grinding meditation I sort of settled on a design and now I've got this bit of pallet wood that I need to clean the bird poo off and rip down to that kind of width. I am wearing a full suit of medieval armour during this rip uh, with polycarbonate eye slits. That's important because I don't have a splitting knife behind the blade. It's just the kind of careless skullduggery that you definitely don't want to slip into just because you're in a rush, especially as the armour takes so long to put on. So with the end square, that pallet would cut down, I'm just using it to create a platform which will go over the uneven surface. This way I can use it as a template that's completely coplanar with the base of the firewood. There's a slightly tricky element of marking off the features of the wood onto the template. This bit's the sort of funny knotty bit in the centre that the knives uh, kind of be arrayed around. Incidentally, while I mark that up, let's go back to talking about magnetic knife blocks. So I've read that they chip the edges of the knives unless you're very careful how you put them on and off the block because the metal of the sort of magnetic strip grabs at the edge of the knife and it can chip it and in a house shared like mine there's very little chance of everyone carefully putting them on and off the block so a wooden one's quite a nice option. Once I'm happy with the layout of the template it's time to cut it out on the bandsaw. Problem, problem. So we need something along there to support that or they're going to wiggle all over the place when we use it as a router guide. A little scrap more of the plywood screwed on there should keep these locked in place. And then I just need to smooth over the screw holes so the router won't snag. <laughs>
Now there's the tricky little pointy bits that the router just can't do. These are all done the old fashioned way. It's a slow and steady game that requires quite a bit of patience. Like so many tasks in woodworking, the main skill here is just not overshooting it and cutting too much away. So it's small little bites, testing small little bites. <laughs> This piece is very weak, as you can see there, <laughs> I'll have to put some glue on that. So after a bit of rummaging and a bit of dismantling, we've got these magnets from old hard disks. Easier than expected. Now, I don't know about you, but I always just want to say neodymium, neodymium, whenever <laughs> I'm using these kind of magnets. Yeah, maybe they weren't even stuck on, they were just magnetically on there, perhaps. So if we make a small template that sort of size for the router, give this something of a test. We've got a magnet there. This is roughly two millimetres of wood and it's basically holding that knife on. So that should work nicely. Microwave one's not quite so strong. With it all flipped over, I'm just drawing out where I'm going to remove material to make the little pockets for the magnets to sit in. Doing this I'm aiming to keep about 1.5 millimetres of wood in place. I'd be much more comfortable if it was more like 3 but that would reduce the magnetic force a lot. I made it slightly more complicated for myself because each of the divots for the knives is on a different level. Having them kind of staggered like that just seemed right with that piece of firewood. Let's cut the slots for the three knives at the back. After dialing in the height of the blade on a bit of pallet scrap it's just a question of cutting away. So one of our remaining tasks is to route the hole for the big long knife. So I'm cutting up the old template and making a new one for that. After practicing an upside down version of that I then cut out the proper one just like I meant to. With the template done the procedure was very similar to the previous one. Using a router with a guide bushing to munch away the majority of the material and then finishing up with hand tools. That mainly complete, we're mixing up some two-part epoxy here, just a small amount, sanding down those magnets and bonding them in. Once I've put them all in like that, just with the pure epoxy, I'm just pouring some sawdust to what's left over and then sort of put putty around them just to make sure they're really solid. This has got a very gentle, very much wedge-like curve to it. And if that just comes straight down and in there, it's really going to wedge it. So before that wedging action occurs, I think I want to be stopping this. So about there. I think we're set. Let's glue the back on. Clamp it all up nice and tight and then leave it overnight. While that dries, I've got the off-cut piece here. It's quite nice compared to, essentially it's just removing the dirt, I think. I wanted to compare the different kinds of finishes. 
The drill is probably a little bit too aggressive. I also wanted to test out how it would look with some Osmo wax oil and on a third of it I just have that straight, a third I'm rubbing most of it off with the cloth and then I also wanted to see what it'd be like with a bit of this stain. It's looking good, just a few little bits to do, cutting off the back panel level with the front, rounding off some of the corners, bit of sanding down so everything's smooth and level. That's pretty much it guys, I'm quite happy with it. If you're wondering what we did for the finish, here it is, get ready. That's right, basically nothing. Uh, might finish it with something in the future, but for now it's just as it is had a little wire brush by hand. The Cinderella knife. That about wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you got some ideas or inspiration for your own projects and all that. Maybe something to do with routing on uneven surfaces. Either way, I appreciate your company. So this one's kind of like a sword in the scabbard. <laughs> if you haven't already, please subscribe and share, and I'll see you next time. I've managed to do quite a good job. <laughs>